lost. They had hoped that he was the Messiah. They attached their lives to his star. But he died. He was killed. They lost. Have you ever lost? Has your team ever not gotten to the Super Bowl? Has your presidential nominee gotten beat? They were leaving Jerusalem because they lost. Didn't matter where they were going, they were just getting out of town. And it was to some hole in the wall called Emmaus that they ended up. And a special measure of the gospel, after they had lost, was that it was in this town called Emmaus that they won. Please be seated. Today's gospel is found in the 24th chapter of the book of St. Luke. Now the same day that the angels appeared to the women at the tomb, two disciples were traveling from Jerusalem to a village called Emmaus. Now as they were walking along, Jesus joined them, but they were kept from recognizing him. Now the two disciples were, were sad and confused because they thought Jesus was dead. And they didn't believe the women who said that they had seen angels who told them that he was alive because they hadn't seen him. So Jesus began to tell them about all the things about himself that were written in the scripture. And as they drew near the village to which they were going, Jesus walked ahead, you know, as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Oh, stay with us, for it is almost evening, and, and well, the day is almost over. So he went in and stayed with them. Now, when he was at the table... He took the bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he vanished. He vanished from their sight. Oh, then they were saying to one another, were not our hearts burning within us? As he was talking with us on the road and, and opening the scripture to us. Well, that same hour, they got up, and they returned to Jerusalem. And there they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. And, oh, they were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. And then the two disciples told them what had happened on the road and how the Lord, how the Lord had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of our Lord. Very well done. Please join me in a word of prayer. <coughs> Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, untold thousands of sermons have been preached on the story of the road to Emmaus. Many of those, I suspect, focused on the road. It was on the road that they met him, and it is on the road that we meet him in places and people and events we least expected. You've heard me say this before, but Christian faith is a journey, not a destination. So pay attention to what happens <coughs> on the road. <coughs> Pardon me. But today, I want to focus not on the road, but on the table. Maybe they met him on the road, but as Marge just told us, it was at the table that their eyes were opened and they saw him clearly. And what did he do then? He took and blessed and broke and gave the bread. And ladies and gentlemen, we have been taking and blessing and breaking and giving the bread ever since every Sunday morning. It's at moments like that and moments like these that we catch a glimpse of who he is. 
That's the power of the table. How God is active in the world can be seen in tables all over Christendom. Communion tables and dining room tables and potluck supper tables and negotiating tables. It's at the table that fellowship and hospitality happens. It's at the table that the kingdom of God comes and God is made known. It's at the table that we catch a glimpse. I caught a glimpse of how God is at work last Sunday afternoon. People of all states, congregations, Skin colors, ethnic backgrounds got together at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Marietta to celebrate the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And ladies and gentlemen, it was at that communion table, surrounded by a whole plethora of diverse people and eating and drinking together, that the hospitality and the fellowship and the community of Christ was palpable in that room. I think I'm going to catch a glimpse at a men's retreat that LCR is hosting in a couple of months. Hear this, we're going to have as many as nine congregations involved and welcomed. And they're going to be as diverse as what happened last Sunday. All from different states, different congregations, different skin colors, different ethnic backgrounds. What we are going to do is gather at Luther Ranch. And I think I think God will be made known in that communion table and those dining room tables where we do what together? Break bread together. I caught a glimpse of how God was at work at a table in, of all places, a Hindu wedding. A must lunch. A circle of friends event. I remember being touched by how God was at work lots and lots of years ago at Luther Place Memorial Church in Washington, D.C., listening, folks, where the entire congregation, the building, became a homeless shelter and a dining room table for all shapes and sizes and colors and kinds and creeds of people. That's the power of a table. Now let's be clear, and if you remember nothing else about this sermon, please remember this. The defining difference in congregations today is no longer the beauty of their organ, the power of their preaching, the depth of their Bible study. The defining difference in congregations today is how they treat people. It's what happens at fellowship hours and potluck suppers, how people are welcomed, whether or not differences in sexual experiences and economic justice and skin color are embraced or ridiculed. It's how people are welcomed in the gospel that's critical to how God is at work in the world. Because, ladies and gentlemen, and this has been said much more eloquently than I can say it, it's as we show hospitality to others, as we show others Jesus, they show others to us. We are not only Jesus for other people, but they become Jesus for us. Now I know the church has a problem with this. For many of, many of us, it pushes us out of our comfort zone. The world out there has told us that hate is much stronger than love, but God tells us precisely the opposite. That love of a neighbor is heart and soul of the Christian faith. And you know as well as I do how God defines neighbor. No, it's not easy. 
C.S. Lewis, the great writer, was asked one day, do you remember this story? C.S. Lewis was asked, what do I do if I can't love my neighbor? Do you remember what he said? One word. Remember? Pretend. Because one day, by the power of the Holy Spirit, maybe our pretending will turn into reality. God is at work in God's world at tables, communion tables, and banquet tables, and negotiating tables, and potluck, summer, potluck supper tables, and dining room tables. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen, because God is still there. God is still there.